So you bought a domain and you're probably thinking, what's next? We're gonna talk about that today on The Journey. All right, cool. So I have this business venture, Coffee and Kickflips. I do have a domain, but I'm also overwhelmed because I don't know what to do next. Getting domain name, that's like our first idea. I know I've had many late nights where I just have a random idea and I have to go buy a domain name. And I'm like, all right, what's next? The next part is really figuring out what you want that domain name to be. Is it for personal use? Is it for business use? Is it just to have and potentially sell later on? So cool. what do you think the first step is after buying a domain? Social media links, right? My menu. And then how do I go about that? I was listening to a webinar the other day and they were recommending don't do a PDF for your menu. So how do I go about putting my menu on there? What information? What photos? Right. So you how get, much text? So you got, you got the first step, right? That's the domain name. That's the, oh. the street address for your website. Okay. Second place to really get all those ideas together, the web, the menu, the information, the pictures, all that stuff, you need a website. If you're not super techie, you need something just quick. A website builder for many popular providers is probably the, the first step. If you are a little bit technical or you have a little bit more time on your hands to really make it exactly what you want, mm -hmm. something like WordPress might be a really great option. Okay. And you can literally put almost whatever you want. You can have a blog on there. You can have your photo galleries, your menu. Don't use a PDF. Put it right on the site. Make it Got easy it. for your visitors. All right. All right. So another thing I was thinking about with coffee and kickflips, and this is Awesome. We actually right. just had some merch made, like hats, t-shirts, because our logo is super rad. My buddy designed it. Anyways, I was like, oh my gosh, as we're talking about my website, I should definitely have the merch on there. Right. Because, you know, yeah, I want to make money off the coffee and the kids coming in to rent the ramp in the back, but how can I make more money? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> the merch. But um, how do I go about that? Also, do I need to worry about security? Because when I'm thinking about money and spending yeah. and i know that there are hackers out there which terrifies me they're going at it it's super scary out there there's a lot of things you can do to really protect yourself and protect your investment now there's there's a couple things you can do if you go with a website builder from a, a company typically they'll handle a lot of the security on the back end for you okay. but if you go with something like wordpress or something a little bit more technical or custom there's some things you want to do too but the very first thing you want to add to your website is what's called an ssl and SSL, SSL. It basically it's that HTTPS in the top of the address bar. Oh, okay. It secures your site. So if you have any login information, any form information, instead of sending that, that text information over the internet for literally anyone to see, like a credit card, super scary, the SSL encrypts it. So if anyone were to capture it in the middle, it's just googly glump. Like it doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> Googly glum. Googly <laughs> glum. That sounds bad. Yeah, it's, that's a technical <laughs> term for you. Yeah. So the second thing you can do to really like beef up the security of your website is to add a firewall and malware removal. Again, if you're using a website builder with a company, they usually do that for you, but those open source applications or custom coded sites, you've got to add that firewall. And basically what that is, is like if I have a house, it basically creates a moat around the house, and mm -hmm. so it keeps out the riffraff, the in-laws, so no one's getting in. And then the malware removal, that's just like if someone were breaking your house, it comes in and fixes it for you, cleans mm -hmm. up everything, Got just it. in case something did happen. Because every 39 seconds, a website gets hacked, and that's super scary. And 64% of businesses say they've, they've had some sort of malware attack on their site. Super scary. We also want to think about backups on your website because life happens, right? Sometimes I like, I know with my own sites and people I, I help out with, they'll go and make changes on their site and like, oh wait, I messed up, I need to go back. And if you don't have a backup, there's nothing to go back to. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to have just that fail safe. The same way you'd have a backup for your computer and your pictures, if something were to ever happen, you wanna have the same thing with your website. So at the end of the day, like you're protected. Cause again, this is your investment. Now I'm getting a lot of emails. Am I okay with just Gmail or? Well, it depends. With Gmail, is it like coffeeandkickflips at gmail.com? Coffeeandkickflips at gmail.com. Gotcha. Yeah. So the, the next step with, with your business is to get a domain-based email. And there's a lot of really great important factors that go into that. Not only is it more secure to have a domain-based email versus just a free email because those companies add those extra layers of security, it's just more professional. So I should have maybe like contact at yeah. coffeeandkickflips.com or Shred what at coffeeandkickflips.com, <laughs> whatever you want to do, right? It, it should Info. be yours. 
Then you can set up your employees to have their own email, like Emma at, and then I have Neely at. It's just gonna look more professional and make sure that you look legitimate to your customers. What about a like click to call? I know I like that when I'm looking at my competition, <laughs> other coffee shops um, and restaurants, so. Yes, click to call is important only if you want people to call you. Don't put a click to call if you're not in a position where you want random phone calls at the end of the night. Which reminds me, do you want to carry two phones? Well, I already do, so now that would be <laughs> Right, many of us use, when we start a business, we end up using just our cell phone, right? And then we get random calls and we answer like, hey, what's up? And it's a potential client. Yeah. And then it looks just- Not professional. Not professional. Yeah. So what a lot of people are doing is getting a second number for their phone. There are lots of apps out there, uh, like Google has a, mm -hmm. a second phone, GoDaddy has yeah. a second phone option. There's plenty of others out there to That's where really point. you don't have to go buy a new phone, which is super expensive, and then buy another plan, which is super, super expensive. Super expensive. I only have so many pockets. Right, and just add that right there, and then now you'll know, cool, this is for business. Hey, this is coffee and kick flips, how can we help you, right? Versus yeah. a friend like, hey, what's up? How's it going? Although that is kind of our vibe at coffee and kick flips. Right. Keep it chill. It's all about what your business is. I don't know how different it's gonna be than when my friends call me, but <laughs> maybe I should also reconsider that. <laughs> I gotta be honest, it sounds like a lot. It sounds like a lot of work. Is there a way to outsource this? And if so, what do you recommend? I trust your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll build it. No. So there are, if you don't want to do it yourself, you can hire a professional. There are plenty of web designers and web developers and people out there that this is their full-time gig, whether you hire a design agency. And what I would say when you're really like looking to see who you're going to hire, check out their portfolio, see if it matches your vision. Because every designer, every company, every That's agency has yeah. their own like feel and flow. So you want to make sure it matches your business, your vision, and most importantly, you wanna make sure you can contact them because if they go and build your site and now they're gone MIA and you need help, you're you're kind of stuck. There's not much you can do. Yeah. Okay, so one other thing, I have extra domains. Okay. And I don't really need them. So what can I do with them? What you can do is you can it. sell it, yeah. right? So oh. there are there's actually an aftermarket just for domain names. You're cool. literally selling online real estate, but it's a domain and things go for thousands of dollars, some is as high as millions of dollars, right? It's crazy, but places you can sell your domain name, there's Afternic, there's Sidu, there's GoDaddy Auctions, there's a lot of places you can list your domain, and the more places you list it, the more visibility and exposure you get to potentially sell your domain. All right, so that's all we have for you. I really hope this helps you with your domain name and really building that strong foundation for your business. Be sure to comment below. We'd love to know your domain name. Also click like, and hey, if you know someone who could benefit from this video, click share, also subscribe. And one last thing, ring that bell so you'll be the first to know about our next videos. This is the journey. See you next time.